9.5 is on distance and coordinate geometry. So we're going to take a look at a coordinate grid, which basically just means an x and y axis and plotting some points and how it relates to the Pythagorean theorem and how we can come up with a formula based on the two points that are listed and the Pythagorean theorem. So on the page, notice we have a right triangle right here. And the right triangle is plotted on an x and y axis. So see the x axis and the y axis here. And so we're going to name two points on our graph. We're going to call this point right here point A, and we're going to call this point right here point B. Point A, we're going to say, has coordinates x1 and y1. x sub 1, y sub 1. The 1s don't mean anything other than it's just the first x value and the first y value compared to this other point over here, B, which we're going to call x2, y2. Again, the 2s don't mean anything other than just saying this is the second x value and the second y value. All right, so looking at those, we're going to actually name a third point. The third point, let's call that C right here. And if you look at that, it's got the same x value as this point up here. So point C has an x value of x1. And it's got the same y value as this point over here. So its y value is y2. So now we have named all three of the points A, B, and C with their generic coordinates. And if we look at that, if we're going to see the distance now between two of these points, well, let's take a look at the legs of our right triangle right here. The distance between B and C right here along the leg, the bottom leg of the triangle, is just the difference between the two x values. Like if this x value right here was, say, 9, and this x value down here was, say, um, 1, then the distance between these two, from 1 all the way up to 9, would be a distance of 8. How do we get 8? Well, we just subtract this x value here, 9, minus this x value down here, 1. 9 minus 1 is 8. So we can state that the same way with these generic coordinates, and we can say that the distance between b and c is just the second x value minus the first x value, this x value over here, minus the x value of c over here. We can do that same thing with the other leg, only since it's going up and down, it's vertical, it's really the distance between the y values. So if we look at the difference between these two, and let's again say that this y value right here, let's say it was 10, and this y value here was, say, 2, then the difference between this distance right here would be 10 minus 2, or 8. From 2 up to 10 would be a distance of 8. So we get that by just subtracting the y values. So this distance on the leg of the right triangle here is just found by taking the second y value minus the first y value. Okay, now that we've labeled that, let's think about what we've actually done here. We've just labeled two sides of a right triangle, and therefore we should be able to get the hypotenuse using the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Well, since we haven't actually put numbers on those, we're going to state that more generally with the coordinates that we have. So the distance between points A, which is x1, y1, and point B, which is x2, y2, is given by basically the Pythagorean theorem, but we're going to write it in the coordinate form. So the distance between A and B squared, so the c squared value basically, is the difference between the x value squared plus the y difference between the y values squared. So basically we have a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. a squared is here, b squared is here, and c squared is right here. Now we can also state this same formula a little bit differently, and we can say the distance between a and b is, well, think about what do we do after we take a squared plus b squared? equals c squared. How do we get c by itself? We take the square root, so we just get c by itself. So we can state this formula in one single step by just taking the square root of everything. 
So the square root of x2 minus x1 squared minus y2 minus y1 squared. So the distance between a and b is basically just the Pythagorean theorem in one step. Now it might look a little confusing here because we're not using a, b, and c, but this is like your a squared, and this is like your b squared, and this is like the c, and we're taking the square root of a squared minus b squared to be getting us our c value, to get us our c value. Okay, so this up here, the distance between A and B, really is just the Pythagorean theorem stated in one single step. x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, and then the square root of that. So you probably should write all that down on the diagram here, and let's see how that actually works down in the examples. So it says find the distance between coordinates negative 5, 2, and 3, negative 4. So let's just define these the same way as we did in the formula above. Let's call this x1, y1, and let's call this x2, y2. All right? So using the distance formula, the second part of it, we're going to do the square root, and we're going to take x2 minus x1, so that's this part right here. So the second x value is 3, minus the first x value, which is negative 5. So 3 minus negative 5 squared, plus y2 minus y1 squared. So let's look at the y values. The second y value is negative 4, minus the first y value, which is 2 squared. All right, now we're just going to simplify that. All right, square root. All right, 3 minus negative 5 is the same thing as 3 plus 5. The minus a negative is really cancels out to an addition symbol, right? Minus a negative is adding. So 3 minus negative 5 is actually just 8. So 8 squared. And negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. So a negative 6 squared. All right, let's simplify a little bit more here. 8 squared is 64. Negative 6 squared is positive 36. Remember, any number squared is positive. So negative 6 times negative 6 is positive 36. All right, well, that's the square root of 100. 64 plus 36 is 100. And that square root is exactly 10. So 10 is the distance between those two points. The distance is 10 units. All right, let's do that same thing in the second example down here. And again, let's just define these points as x1, y1, and x2, y2. All right, I'm actually going to change colors again here. Let's go back to blue. All right, so the distance between them with the distance formula is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared. So let's take a look at the second x value minus the first x value. So 7 minus 1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So the second y value is 5 minus the first y value, which is 3 squared. All right, now we just simplify that. So 7 minus 1 is 6. So 6 squared and 5 minus 3 is 2. So 2 squared. Simplify a little bit more. 6 squared is 36, 2 squared is 4, so this is the square root of 40, which is approximately 6.3. I put it in my calculator. If I want to reduce this square root, which is a good idea, why don't you do that with me? We talked about this over the last few days of class. So what perfect square, what's the biggest perfect square that's a factor of 40? Uh, 4 is, 4 times 10. So the square root of 4 times the square root of 10 is the same thing as the square root of 40. And then the square root of 4 is 2. So 2 times the square root of 10 is another way we could state that answer. So square root of 40, which is about 6.3, as a reduced square root, it's 10 times, uh, sorry, 2 times the square root 